Oh boy. We need to talk. We're coming up on the one year anniversary of the pandemic. <laughs> I'm also coming up on one year of living with my parents, with my family. Which is just something that I never, you know, thought. I don't even need to say this. Obviously, nobody ever thought anything of it. Shut up. Let's just jump into it. Shh. Just one year in a pandemic. Ugh. One year in my childhood home. It's the energy in this space for me. It's the telling everyone every detail of the plans for my day that I don't even have. For me, it's the constant interruptions and knocks at my door while I'm having me time for me. It's the dishwasher. I fucking love that. It's the free laundry <laughs> in the house. I don't even have to walk with my dirty underwear down the streets of New York and then pay and then hang out there and wait. It's just right there. It's the mommy makes good food. It's my family. No matter how angry these people make me, they are a part of me and I love them. It could be much worse. There are some people that argue basic human rights with their family and my heart goes out to you. I'm very sorry, but I love my family and I have been getting to spend more time with them than in any other regular lifetime I would have been able to. It's the California sun. It's getting to run and work out outdoors. I mean, it rains hardly ever. And when it does, I can still run through that. It's not like a blizzard, even though that is the perfect texture for running. It's the perfect texture for running. Just enjoying it. One thing, oop. is getting to play music. I mean, I'm back in my, I couldn't, br look at all this shit. I couldn't bloody carry that on the plane. Two amps. I just learned a sick new baseline. You guys want me to show you? I'll show you at the end, okay? I'll put it at the end. If I remember, I won't remember. My PS4, my TV, like, I literally just get to sit and read. That was not, that didn't get to, I didn't get to do that before. I didn't have the time to read. I didn't even care about reading because I wasn't even thinking too much. I was just doing and playing video games. I didn't, I, if it weren't for the pandemic, I never would have gotten to play The Last of Us. Aww. And that game is incredible. It's so fucking fun. I started playing Life is Strange. Let me know if you want me to post those videos. I might do it. I, I've been recording them just for fun, but I don't know if I'm gonna post them. But if you guys want me to see Life is Strange, if you guys want to see me play Life is Strange, let me know because it was so funny. The first thing that happened was the characters started talking and their mouths weren't moving. And I was like, The Last of Us has absolutely spoiled me rotten. Like what? <laughs> but anyways, aside from all that, it's the constant overthinking. It's the pressure and urgency of being productive and doing something good with my life. It's the guilt of privilege. It's the social isolation. It's the looming existential questions that just haunt the back of my mind. It's the loss and lack of inspiration and motivation and passion. It's the Fear of the unknown future. Fear I won't live up to my own expectations. Fear I'll disappoint everyone who's helped me along this journey or been in my life. I don't know. Fear I won't be loved. If I don't prove that I am lovable. Fear I won't believe I matter because what I do isn't enough for me or anyone else. It's so interesting because I just said and everyone says we were given this gift of time. This is time that we never had. Why didn't we have it before? And why do I feel like I don't have it now? I'm probably looking at maybe not a full year, but close to another year in this house before my school opens back up in New York. And I feel like I don't have time. I, I feel like I'm aging. I'm 21, I'm gonna be 22 in less than a week. It's March 1st, my birthday is March 5th. I don't know why I feel like I'm dying. <laughs> why do I stress out so much? Some days, and then other days, I don't have a care in the world. Some days, I am so chilled out that you couldn't bother me if you tried. You couldn't get me to worry about my life or anyone's expectations if you tried. How come I have such a strong internal aversion to social media and the technological takeover, and yet, actively am still participating. And so many of my friends have the same thing. I mean, is anybody out there watching this like, oh, I love Instagram, it just is so great. <laughs> like, why do we all kind of feel like it's bad? And the thing is, there are some really good things about it. There, I've met people in my life 
through Instagram. Probably a handful of people that I met solely because of Instagram would have never ever even known about their existence on this planet while I'm alive without Instagram. And that's a double-edged sword too because they don't live next to me, so I can't even go see them. So I see them and communicate with them through my phone and it's never enough. I just want to be in person with them and I can't because our lives don't cross over physically. I got friends all over the world that I can't see. And unless we're planning on getting married, I'm not moving somewhere for someone. And that's all I want to do is I want to be in person with people. That's what people are for. And that's why is global connection really such a good thing? And that's a whole other video that I was planning on making. But I don't know if we're ready to talk about that. Cause I'm not fully, I mean, I can name all the good and bad things about Instagram, but at the end of the day, I don't think I'm gonna leave it. So I don't know if I wanna tell you all the things I hate about it. Cause then you're gonna see me post a picture and be like, but this girl hates being on Instagram. Why is she posting? I don't know, fear of being left out. Maybe I do like it. And why do we all relate to so many things? and yet never listen to people the way we wish they listen to us. Because, oh, they're not gonna understand. Oh, we're not gonna understand each other. When we know we relate, we're humans. We're made of the same stuff. We have different experiences that shift the way we interact with all this stuff, but we're made of the same material. We're all conscious and reasoning, thinking things with the same corporeal, bodies and senses that interact with the world. I We relate. We understand each other and we don't listen. And we wish people would, but we don't ourselves. And some people do. And what would the world look like if we all listened all the time? What if we were all so fucking peaceful? I mean, what would that look like? It seems so absolutely ridiculous. It, it seems like it's not even a world I would want to live in. Maybe it's because I'm used to this one. This seems more fun to have a challenge, but we could just listen to each other. Could. Why do some people really honestly believe they are superior to others based on race or anything and feel that they have the right, the birthright to control them? Who? Uh, uh, I can't imagine being from somewhere. I'm just trying to put myself in Christopher Columbus's shoes. I'm trying to put myself in those shoes. What does it take? Like what in your brain justifies this is their home, this is their land, and I am taking it. And on top of that, I'm gonna rape and murder. What, what? like I said, we're both human beings. We both have this ability to think and reason. How do we come to such vastly different conclusions? Is it just because I've seen the after effects of all this? Or did they just not, I common sense, our thoughts on basic human rights were just completely skewed. Why are human rights up for debate? <laughs> That's so interesting that we have to debate that. That we're not all equal. That's... That's crazy. Dude, is that not crazy? That based on literally the location you were born, the location on the planet, the random minuscule fucking planet in a in out in the middle of bumfuck nowhere universe milky way galaxy no one's it doesn't no one's heard of nobody knows where we find ourselves so important not only in the universe some people think that we might be the only things that are alive in the universe um Uh, okay. Mm hmm Or if you think of the universe as, like, the Earth, let's say the Earth is the whole universe. Like, we're a grain of sand, if that. If that. And that little grain of sand. Like, imagine a little grain of sand thinking that it's, like, the only thing that matters or that exists. And we haven't even explored our entire planet, so, like, what? Like, we don't even know what's in the fucking ocean. <laughs> What? Where did I start that? Oh yeah, but then on top of that, to think you're the most important race on the planet. And that your beliefs, and that your power um, is absolutely justified. And um, the most important, like it needs to be preserved and maintained. You need to maintain that power and control over other people because of, why? Sorry, why again? Because why? It is so weird. <laughs> Everything's so fucking weird. 
Like, don't you think it's weird when you think about it? Obviously, like, you can go down the whole simulation rabbit hole. Sometimes I just think it's- sometimes I'm literally running on the car- like, there's a concrete path. It's like, in this sort of mountainy area. And I just, you know, I look around at all the people on bikes and things, or like pushing strollers and shit, wearing really weird workout clothes. And I'm just like, look at us all on this natural earth and the shit we've built. Like, we're all in little boxes living next to each other, like indoors. Like, we're all just wearing sh like, we're just- it's so weird. And the fact that we don't have any answers to anything, it's just like- it's just kind of sometimes so weird that I'm like- It's definitely a simulation. But then, what if the blue pill revealed that nothing is a lie? That there is no mystery? Everything is exactly what it looks like. So, um, what do I do with all this? The weight of all of this every day? I've been reading books. Other people have thought about this stuff before me, right? And other people took the time to really flush out these ideas and talk to other people about their ideas and dedicate themselves to writing it in a clear and cohesive, digestible manner. And um, that's why books are cool. If nothing else, just to hear somebody else's thoughts. I don't know. If nothing else, just to sit and focus on something that isn't a constant hit of dopamine, that isn't designed to keep you addicted to it that isn't designed to let you as mindlessly and as easefully as possible continue to use it. The book is not trying to control you. The book was written for you. The book was somebody's expression of something. Somebody was thinking all these thoughts and absolutely needed to share them. It's language. It's in the English language. It's somebody using the language that you speak in a way you've never used it before. <sighs> Books are quiet. Technology is not quiet. I've been allowing myself to question. Sometimes I'm like, okay, stop, you have to st you have to stop. Sometimes I try so hard to control my thoughts and my feelings. And it's like trying to control a tornado. It's like trying to control a toddler. Like it needs to explore. It has this need to do that. It wants to do that. Why would I control, why? What, what would I get out of controlling it? A few moments of peace, I don't know. A fucking pet pot with like a steamy a lid on it and just. What's, how is that better than this? How is that better? Recognizing. I've been recognizing my discomfort and knowing it's the process of growth. Discomfort signals the presence of growth happening because it's not comfortable to do things you've not done. I want to grow. Some people maybe don't, you don't want to change. Then maybe if you're in discomfort, you better stop because pretty soon you're gonna, something's gonna happen. I've been having compassion for myself and loving myself because for one, if I don't have either of those things for myself, I can't have them for other people. If I don't love myself, I believe you can't love other people because you don't know how and it's not real. You're not loving them to love them. I mean, love is that one thing that we are all so innately pulled towards all the time. I don't even have to, this isn't anything new. I, you just have to look at the gazillions of movies and songs that are written about it and books. It's all written about love. And I think it's been skewed. It's socially so fucked up in so many ways, but that's also another video. The point is, we're all drawn towards it, innately. And truthfully, we don't know how. I think we think love is supposed to be easy and effortless. And to some degree it is, because when it gets complicated, you know that something's off. But once you get past the initial stage of we're both deciding to love each other, it's not easy anymore. It's hard work. And we don't practice that. We have to practice it with ourselves. If you're extremely hard on yourself all the time, if you don't think that you have inner value, how could you think that of someone else? What is it that you love about them? This is a whole nother video, but I'm just saying I've been having compassion and love for myself and recognizing that yeah, I'm not everything I want to be. I'm not Daft Punk, okay? <laughs> like, I'd love to be Daft Punk. I'd love to be Damon Albarn of the Gorillas, but I'm not worthless because I'm not. And that doesn't mean that one day I won't be doing something that meaningful to myself. What they were doing was very meaningful to them. And that's all I want. I want to be doing something very meaningful to me. So having compassion for the fact that maybe one day I will be doing that if I allow myself to get there instead of forcing myself by some weird logic that like I have to be doing that now or I have to even be doing that in the first place. I've been being open to other people's perspectives of life, just hearing them. I've been being an observer of life rather than a player in it all the time. All the time, a player. We're always in life. We're always playing the game. Sometimes 
it's helpful to just observe it. You can't help but still be playing in it. You can't exactly exit the simulation. But you can take moments of pause and just observe without contributing anything. And I think one of the most difficult things that I've been really struggling to do is not judge it. I mean, how is there even a measurement against which to judge things? There is no perfection of anything. If you're measuring my life against Jesus's, the only reason you believe that's objective perfection is because certain men needed to control you and they succeeded. And that's where I'm at today. And just to briefly touch on that depression, I've been feeling really good recently. I've been taking these like mood pills. Okay, that sounds weird. They're like probiotics, it's for your gut. So apparently a lot of your mood starts in the gut. So I've been taking probiotics, mood probiotics, and whatever is, how I also, you know, started running a lot more again. So those two things in tandem have really been helping me and out. And we really are on a little floating rock. And I will say one thing about that whole, do whatever you want, it doesn't matter because we're just, human beings on this little tiny planet in the middle of nowhere. We do matter. We matter to each other. My life affects other people and everybody's feeling shit all the time. That matters. What you do affects people and I believe that that matters. So running around rampant doing whatever I want just because I know I'm gonna die one day, it's very selfish. So I don't subscribe to that necessarily. It matters when you're living your life based on other people's judgments. Don't do that, but don't live your life unaware that other people exist because that's different. There's a difference between screaming, running naked through your neighborhood at four in the morning because you're drunk and you feel like it and you're like, well, I'm gonna die one day anyways and not wearing a certain outfit because you're afraid of what people will think of you. But it's not like you're gonna be naked. It's these things are not the same. I am gonna end the video now. Thanks for watching. I'm really actually this close to finishing The Last of Us. I probably have like five minutes left of the game and I'm really sad about it, which is why I started playing Life is Strange because I don't wanna finish The Last of Us. It's really good. I feel really attached to it and um, I love it and it's so much fun and I don't want it to end, but that video will be coming soon. Um, but I don't want it to, so just let me know if you want me to play Life is Strange instead because I could push off the ending of The Last of Us for the rest of my life. I really could. I don't want to know. I want to keep living in it forever. So, like, the fact that there's not going to be a Last of Us 3 for however many fucking years, like, I can't deal with that. I don't want to. I want to keep playing. For those of you who finished that game in a weekend, I mean, congrats. You could have been playing it for... Months. I mean, I'm almost been playing it for a whole year. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go now. Subscribe. I don't know. <laughs> Bye.